Let's get to know your lino cutter or your gouge tool. This is the tool that you'll be using to carve into your printing plate. Um, so there are a few different parts for most of our uh, lino cutters here. This part is called the outer collar and uh, the post is what the part that's attached to the handle there is called. Uh, inside the outer collar there are two other parts. Uh, one is a ball joint and one is a floating collar and they attach together. Uh, they kind of fit together like little puzzle pieces inside the outer collar. So this is the ball joint. The little ball uh, faces upwards. So you can look at it or you can see it I mean uh, when you're looking down at your lino cutter and this is the floating collar. The bottom part is straight and the top part is beveled. Beveled meaning there's an angle. Um, so the bottom straight part goes on the bottom and the upper part that is beveled goes facing up touching the uh, the top of the ball joint. They sit together inside the little post. You can kind of hold them in like I was doing there and then twist to uh, screw in the outer collar. It takes a few times assembling and reassembling to get the hang of it, so um, make sure that you practice, get a, a feel for it, and um, once you get comfortable and you kind of know the feel of how it, how it is when you're putting it together, you can um, just insert the ball joint and the floating collar upside down into the outer collar and then twist it together like I did um, just now. Now the bottom part of some of your handles opens up the way that I just opened it up, but your blades are stored in a, um, a larger box separated by, by size. So if you look at each blade, um, there's a number on it on most of them. Some of them are blank, so you have to compare with the others, but this one is a three. The first one that I pulled out is a five. This is a two. This one is a one, the thinnest blade. So one is the thinnest, five is the widest. And then we've got, um, I don't remember the technical term, sort of like a, a point blade. Um, okay, so the way that you insert a blade into your lino cutter as you unscrew it so that the ball joint and the floating collar open up a little bit. You can see that gap um, almost like a little upside down smiling mouth and you're going to insert the curved part, the, the flange is what that is called, into that opening. So it's in between the ball joint and the floating collar and then you twist right to tighten. Tidy righty, lefty loosey as they say. Now there is another type of lino cutter handle, and that one is uh, like this. It works the same way, but it doesn't have the pieces on the inside. So when you unscrew that outer collar, you will just insert the flange, the curved part of the blade, into um, that little upper mouth that opens up, and then twist it right to close it. Same thing. Okay, so now we're gonna practice uh, carving. And we're going to do that with a small block. So this piece of rubber is a super small version of what you'll be using for your final relief block print. Uh, you can use a stencil and draw in part of a design like I'm doing here, or you can freehand your own design. Remember, if you're going to include a letter or a word, it has to be backwards or it will print backwards. And if you don't take that advice, then you'll find out what I mean here in just a minute. Okay, so once you've got your blade put into your lino cutter, you're going to actually start carving with it. You're going to use this lovely tool called a bench hook. It hooks right onto the end of your table, and then you want to press your block into that um, upper raised part to keep it still for you. Once you feel comfortable carving, it's okay to move your block away so it's not resting right up against if it's difficult to get to some areas, but notice how I am pressing the blade onto my block and I'm sort of scooping into this rubber piece and I'm always carving away from myself. OK, 
Okay, I'm always carving towards the top of my bench hook, never pointing the blade towards myself, never keeping my fingers um, across from the blade. So it's very easy to get caught up in an area, kind of slip and then gouge right into yourself. I have had those situations happen. So it is really important that you're being careful that you're using tools properly. So keep in mind while you're carving that the area that you're carving away is not going to print any ink. It's not going to be raised up to print the ink. Anything you're carving away is going to be left white or left the color of your paper, uh, which in today's case is white. So only the parts that are raised up will pick up the ink when you are rolling it on here in just a few minutes. When you finish carving, you've got all these little bits of cheese looking rubber pieces, uh, make sure you throw them in the trash. Okay, so you've got your little uh, rubber carved and now you're going to use ink. Now your bench hook is double purpose. You're going to use a spatula and scoop a little bit of ink out onto your clean bench hook and you're going to use a brayer to spread that ink out. You want it to have a nice tacky texture. It should feel kind of uh, sticky. It should sound kind of sticky once it's ready to apply to your uh, block. So spend some time really rolling it out. It's called prepping your ink. And then have a piece of scrap paper that you can put your block onto. This will save you a lot of time cleaning up uh, when it is time to do that. So take your brayer, roll the ink onto your rubber stamp. For these rubber stamps, since they are so small, we're going to lift them up and print them with rubber down to paper. Usually when we do this, and I'll re-emphasize this later, we do it kind of the other way. Um, we put the paper on top of the rubber, but in this case it's fine. Um, it's going to work easier this way. So here on out you're going to repeat that process. You shouldn't have to apply new ink every time to your bench hook, but you will have to reapply some ink a few times. Um, so continue stamping out and form your pattern on a full half sheet of paper. Uh, so when we're doing our final block prints, we'll use one of those tools with a handle called a Baron, but we're not going to use those today because it will kind of uh, press into your block too much and cause your ink to smear. So continue on stamping and um, I'm going to put this on time lapse to speed it up for a minute. For your last steps, cleaning up, use one of the putty knives to scrape any ink that you can off of your bench hook. If you've got a ton of ink and it's not mixed with any other colors, you can scrape it back into your jar. 
it's very important that it's clean and not mixed with other colors if you're going to do that. Uh, but then just wipe the blade of your putty knife into a paper towel carefully. And then you're gonna clean everything else off with soap and water. Clean your bench hook, clean your brayer, clean your spatula, clean your putty knife with soap and water in the sink. Then it's really important that you spray down your table and use a paper towel to clean it up. The end. <laughs>